Hello everybody to this first video of the series about the G63 AMG. Um, yeah, for everybody who saw the, the project or the result, the capturing of the project online already, I'm planning to create a tutorial series about this project, what the elements are, how I created it, some tips and tricks. And yeah, today I want to start with the overview video to give you, give you an idea on how the scene is set up and built. And then the following videos will be about, it will be deep dives about um, the different aspects, like for example, camera setup, lighting, animation, um, light baking, and so on. Um, before we start, uh, make sure that you subscribe and hit the uh, notification button because I'm not sure in which frequency I'm going to release the, the videos as I have to do this side of my regular job. Um, but I'm going to try to do as much as possible and as quick as possible. But yeah, if you want to make sure that you're not missing the video, um, subscribe and hit the notification button so you get a notification once I upload the next video. I was very happy when I received so much uh, positive feedback about the scene, uh, which is the reason why I decided, okay, let's take the time and talk a little bit about the details of it, how it was created, what the, let's say, details were, and, and some tricks that uh, might not be too obvious because we're talking here about setting up a real-time scene in Brett, so we're not ray tracing, everything is pure based on OpenGL. And compared to ray tracing, you need some more creativity, let's say, in terms of how to achieve certain effects. In ray tracing, a lot of the stuff comes for free because it's just accurate rendering, but OpenGL isn't. Um, and there you need to find some ways to make it look realistic or make it look, look nicer. So a lot of the tips and tricks that I'm showing here are just, I don't know, tricks that I learned during my time using Fred, but also some, especially around the lights, uh, are based on um, yeah tips that I got from Pascal Seifert, who has an own YouTube channel uh, himself as well. And there are also great tutorials online already. So I'm, link it, I'm going to link it in the, um, in the description box. So make sure to check out his channel as well. Um, and yeah, take a look at his uh, tutorials. But let's start and uh, yeah, just take a quick look at the scene itself uh, to get an overview. Um, as you can see in the scene graph uh, to the left here, there's not much like special stuff going on, right? We have a few cameras. I'm going to talk about that in a second. We do have an environment with two environments that might be a bit special. We do have a data set of the Mercedes itself and we do have some rocks and lights. Let's take a look at the camera first, just go from top to bottom, um, the scene craft structure. We have two different cameras and just to point that out so you learn from my mistakes, um, I've animated and applied all the, let's say, cinematic aspects of my scene uh, to the perspective camera, which you should never do. Uh, the perspective camera in Fred is automatically created and should be your working camera. Um, and if you want to create a cinematic camera as well and change like effects like adding depth of field and so on, please do that on a newly created camera because otherwise you will not have the perspective anymore to work because you can imagine if you have a, a heavy depth of field effect, it's pretty tough to like do material setups or whatever with it, right? So um, learn from my mistakes because I animated and applied everything to the perspective camera and I had to create this work camera in addition, uh, which I'm using to, uh, to set up uh, materials or I don't know, light baking and whenever I'm working in the scene and my cinematic camera is the perspective. So that being said, there are a lot of like details. You can already see the difference, right? If I'm, if we're looking like that, the lights look different, the whole scene looks different. Um, so there's a lot of effects applied to this camera and also tone mapping and um, image processing aspects are applied. And we're going to talk about that in detail in, a, in an extra episode. The next aspect is an environment. Um, and as you can already see, let me go to the work camera uh, quickly. As you can see, we have an HDR dome um, as the main element of the environment. And then we have the stones as well. But Let's take a look at the environment first. Uh, we have this H HDR dome, which comes from HDR Haven. I'm going to link uh, this below as well. Um, just a regular dome. And then we have this special dome. And I'm going to talk about that in detail as well. Uh, the reason why we have this local environment is that OpenGL doesn't support object reflection. So we wouldn't see this rock 
which is reflected in the car paint, because that's an aspect of ray tracing or an aspect that OpenGL doesn't have. Uh, if, but we still want to, to do it. So I'm going to show you a way how to create local environments to uh, still have this reflection uh, on the car itself to make it mo look more realistic and also more interesting as well. Next aspect is the car itself. So you can see um, medium to high tessellated uh, data set of the G63 AMG. Uh, this is a, I don't know, a gaming asset from TurboSquid. So it is not NURBS data. This is uh, yeah, poly data that gets imported in, in that way. So it's not tessellated in red. It is pre-tessellated already. I've just imported it pretty high, high quality. So it's good enough, uh, but you could also work with way lower uh, tessellation uh, quality. Just used it because it doesn't matter too much for red in, uh, in OpenGL, um, but yeah. The next element are the rocks, uh, which I guess are one of the most interesting ones because a lot of people have been asking like how were they created? Where are they coming from? I'll talk about that again in one of the detailed uh, episodes about the rocks themselves. Um, I or can already tell you that they're coming from uh, Turbo Squid as well. Um, pretty low tessellation, as you can see. Some of them have higher tessellation, but um, pretty low tessellation, but they have a pretty good uh, texture resolution. So some of them even have 8K um, textures. Some of them have 4K textures, so uh, pretty good resolution also for the close-up shots that you saw in the final capture. And the last element in the scene are the lights. Uh, so we got the rear lights. Let me switch the camera so we can see them a little bit better. We got the, the headlights, um, which consists of, let's go to the headlight quickly, um, two elements. One is the light glow itself, and the other one is the flare. And we're doing that just to be able to control it. This is one of the tricks that I learned from Pascal as well. Yeah, it's just to make it independent so we can control the intensity of it and the visibility of it independent from each other. And then let's go to the rear part of the car. We have the rear lights as well. Uh, again, uh, we have the lens flare as a separate object, light object. And in this case, we didn't have a circular shape like in the front. So we have this special shape in terms of the light emitter. Uh, so we used a geometry light, which is basically a geometry with an incandescent uh, material, which is emitting light into the scene. Um, yeah, so that's that's that one light. Then we do have a sunlight, as you might have seen. It's turned off. I just used it for light baking because I really liked, I don't know, like the interior was looking too homogeneous for me. Um, and I really wanted to have this, this hard shadows. Although it's unrealistic, I, I know because we have an overcast environment and it should be way more diffuse light. I still like the dynamics of this of this type of lighting interior, especially because otherwise there's not much going on in the interior, right? And the, the nice thing is we are an OpenGL, right? So I can fake if I like the if I like the look, I can fake this type of effect because we're not like physically correct computing the image. Um, so yeah, I took took this uh, this option and uh, baked some some fake light effects into it, which make them look, from my point of view, a little bit more interesting uh, as well. But again, it's also an, an individual topic we will talk about. Then we have some small light effects on the number plate, for example. Also, this is baked, pre-baked. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And um, yeah, I think that's it for the for the lights in the scene and for the for the lighting effects. Um, and those are the elements basically. So I'm trying to split it up logically a little bit. So we, I don't know, we get, um, on the one hand, you have a, a holistic view on how the scene is created. But on the other hand, I also want to make the videos short enough. Uh, people can use them individually, even if they don't want to build a, this exact scene or reproduce it completely, um, but just use it for other projects. Um, that's why I'm trying to split it per topic a little bit. So it's a yeah, better overview and searchability for people that that are not here because of the the G63 project, but I don't know, just are looking for a smart way to create real lights, for example, in red. Again, um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your interest and uh, make sure to subscribe so you're not missing the videos. I'll do my best to, to get you um, regular updates and regular content. 
uh, around that. And with that being said, thank you very much and uh, see you in the next video.